estimatedly a whopping 96.4 million hectares of land in India is experiencing either desertification or degradation. That is the equivalent of almost 30% of the entire geographical area of the country. Globally, land degradation along with climate change and biodiversity loss is expected to force 700 million people to migrate by 2050. Even as the world grapples with the challenges of losing more and more arable land, a remote hillock in the Dharmapuri district of Tamil Nadu in South India has found a way to reverse the desertification. Over the last decade, green activist Piyush Manush and his friends have successfully transformed a rocky, barren piece of land, one that everybody in the region, including farmers, had given up on, into a 250-acre cooperative forest. We are presently now in the water catchment area of River Kaveri. Almost this entire region of undulated, rocky, dry and arid regions uh, constitute major part of the water catchment area. So we have actually turned it into dry and arid. It was not like so earlier. Based on the model of social forestry, a cooperative forest is one in which a group of people pitch in together to create a for-profit jungle where resources are shared and sustainable businesses built around it. Initially, when I came here, I bought one and a half acres. Small time in the dream. From young age, you have this dream. You see a stream running, a bamboo house. Dancing around, we dancing around, obviously with my wife. So this dream is that to live in a jungle. So yeah, all that I have to tell my friends is that let's create a forest. And hopefully the forest will be for profit. And then it fascinated, it was fascinating an idea for my friends. And the added advantage for them was that, see I was already a green entrepreneur, I was making areca sheath plates, we had introduced that, we are working on vermicompost, dabbling with tree planting and different things. So it appealed to them immediately. And they said, let's chip in. Over the years, as many as 70 investors joined Piyush on this roller coaster ride of coaxing nature to go back to her benevolent self. Yeah, now, presently, uh, no returns are guaranteed to people. We only want people to come in, pitch in here, start their businesses, start their work, start living here, and yeah, and make merry. For each of the 70 odd people, the co op has been both an environmental experiment and a journey in self discovery. For former IT engineer Vignesh and his wife Lavinia, the forest was an escape from the corporate circus. Having relocated to a humble abode within the jungle, Vignesh has been experimenting with poultry and organic food products for the past two years. I am a farmer who is a farmer who is a farmer who is a the Dharmapuri district of Tamil Nadu, where this forest stands, is a semi-arid region in which 70% of the population relies on dry land agriculture. Despite experiencing two monsoons a year, the erratic and high intensity of rain often prevents the region's groundwater from being recharged. Most of the rainwater gets wasted as runoff. This is where efforts like a co-op forest that not just focuses on reviving biodiversity but as much on groundwater recharge could make material difference. This entire region is only populated with invasive species of Acacia florensis and a local species called Arap. With the biodiversity lost, the biggest loss has been through the water, groundwater levels. Now what's happened is, no trees, no humus, this ground has become hard. You have hard-earned hillocks. So our effort is now to make the earth spongy earth back to the level where it can absorb 
water, it can absorb moisture in the air and send it to the ground. So in this effort, as a first step what we have done is, we have sort of started rainwater harvesting structures. In 2012, Tamil Nadu suffered what is considered the worst drought in 140 years. In the years that followed, the state has been subject to violent climate vagaries. From devastating floods to cyclones to continuous droughts, the co-op worked its way through all those years. Obviously it was said that we will share profits, but then after the rude jolt of continuous drought after 2012, it was evident to everyone that it's not an easy and rosy affair. So it's been 10 years of waiting and now we have got electricity now. So what we have done is we have built, built ponds on top of hillocks. These small ponds, these small structures, when there's monsoon, when the flow of water is good, we will pump water from downstream to upstream. And as we fill these ponds, these hillocks will become into small sponges. While the environmental impact is visible in the many water bodies and lush greenery, the co-op has also been making some headway in turning into a commercially viable model. It now has a fully functional bamboo furniture unit headed by Piyush, a herbal cosmetic unit run by his wife Monica, and a few young green entrepreneurs dabbling in eco-businesses like plant-based food units, free-range poultry and composting. The co-op has already grossed an annual turnover of one and a half crores, mainly from the sale of its primary produce of bamboo, aloe vera, medicinal plants and vegetables. With the availability of electricity from this year, the numbers are projected to grow. With over 150 herbal products made from co-op resources like neem, aloe vera and goat milk, Monica can be considered an eco-leader in her own right. The goal now is to encourage other partners to be more than just investors here. Piyush envisions the co-op as a green incubation centre, where people get a chance to dabble in eco-conscious businesses. Eventually, the dream is to take the model back to the very community that had given up on this soil, the farmers. So, all these years, we, we have been very successful in conserving water, but we have not been successful in distributing water. So, now that electricity has arrived, we are now distributing water. And as soon as this happens, we are now ready to invite farmers farmers from all regions to come so that we can share our experience. Experience of doing what? Experience of drawing the most feasible water management plan ever. So where they could secure their water security and they can just take the same model, similar model and implement it in their areas, respective areas. And especially in regions where they come from undulated landscape. When not struggling with drought, the farmers in the Dharmapuri region struggle with an unpredictable northeast monsoon. The high intensity showers that thrash the district over short, sporadic periods leave them with too small a window to sow their seeds. Climate change and inclement weather patterns have in fact forced most farmers here to migrate to other regions. For those farmers who live downstream, however, this man-made forest is perhaps emerging as their last ray of hope. With wells brimming with water in peak summer, they finally have a reason to stay home. The cutter at the manna and the palada la tani and the salon border. Nanga the assignment and the worry illamta say mudia. Englada orbagama adic mudia, nello chicken, orbagam matana adic mudia. Thirbun malavana matana, palada nani vangina, and the bagadigunga. Even the cutter at the nala. The co-op seems to have a place for everyone. Farmers, engineers, birds, even buffaloes. Standing witness to the fact that with a little nudge, nature can and invariably does find a way. So we are a mixture of grassland, we are a mixture of trees that we have planted and we are a mixture of spaces which have been green on its own. In, in this age of climate change, of delayed rainfall or over rainfall, 
planting trees and not taking care of them doesn't work like that way. So a little care of ours and there will be the downstream, side stream, ripple effect and things will fall into its own place.